water. So clean and pure, but is it really? Today we're gonna to talk about the resin and its role in keeping this water clean. Steve Duvall, rental technical support in our rental division. Uh, been with the company for many, many years and is the guy behind the phone, that voice when you need to call and actually get some technical uh, support on the rentals. This is the guy that you're talking to. So obviously has a lot of years of experience in the boiler industry. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about resin. It's something that typically you don't see, um, but it is so very, very important to the water softener, which is also very important to the boiler. Steve, why don't we talk a little bit about resin and um, actually how it helps in the water softener. It's actually the heart of the water softener. Um, without it, you wouldn't have any soft water. But uh, it's, a, um, it's a resin or zeolite. It's, uh, what it does is uh, it's an ion exchange. In other words, it exchanges uh, hard water, the minerals, and releases soft water out into the system. Um, so when you actually um, use resin, mm -hmm. uh, where's it actually going in the water softener? It's uh, typically, it's in these tanks, these uh, mineral tanks. Uh, typically you'd have a gravel or sand bottom and then the re resin would be, oh, 55, 60% up. And mm -hmm. so you'll have a space here is a freeboard area. So in other words, you'll have water coming in this direction, uh, going through the resin, and then once it goes through, then it goes out of the, out of the softener to the system. Okay. So it comes in hard and goes out soft. Okay, so now um, obviously it's a lot of particulate and things like that are running through it. Yes. Um, so how long does resin last? It, depending on your water quality, if your water quality is average, uh, it could go 10 to 15 years mm. without becoming an issue. Um, the issue would be if the, if the beads start to crush, uh, if, uh, if they get, if a lot of iron gets on them and, and you can't clear the iron off of them. We found that um, it's, it's better they make uh, solutions that you can wash the mm -hmm. resin with, mm -hmm. but in the long run, just replace the resin. So. Okay. Now this resin is actually um, pretty cool. I don't know if you can get a shot of this, uh, Tyler, but it's small little beads. Now, tell how this works, because um, there's obviously salt in the in the brine tank, right? Um, where it makes brine right, in, the, right. in the tank, uh, and then what happens with this resin? Right. The state that these uh, this resin is in, uh, they have a negative charge, uh, and minerals that say calcium, magnesium, they have a positive charge. Okay. And so if you can think real small, uh, when that passes, when that magnesium and calcium, the minerals will attach to these little beads. Okay. And so that makes the water soft. It okay. will be soft once it passes through these. Okay, and so at some point, all these beads kind of get clogged up and then you have yeah. to yeah. wash them out. Typically, and... yeah, typically you'll have a, a water meter or something uh, and you figure up, calculate how many gallons each tank can pass. Mm -hmm. You take your water hardness and calculate that. And that's, say you set it for 10,000 gallons. Right. And then it go into a region. Okay. Because at that time, it'll start getting hard. Okay. And because so, the beads are full. Okay. So the beads get full, but from a regeneration standpoint, um, what's actually washing that, that, taking that away from the bead? What washes it? Well, when these go into a region, the first cycle is a uh, back flush. Okay. And so it's the only time that this tank will reverse so your water will come in and back flush. Okay. And that fluffs the bed. Uh, it does two things. It fluffs the bed and it uh, washes off uh, the heavy stuff. Okay. Yeah. It won't recharge the, the beads, right. but it'll, it'll get out the heavy solids. Okay. Right. Okay. And then all of those are, are gone, which allows it to then. And then it reverses cycle. Okay. And that's when it draws brine okay. in over these beads. And that's when it washes all the minerals uh, uh, off mm -hmm. and then replaces it with sodium on the beads. So it recharges that in a negative state. Okay. And then it allows it to just repeat the process. And then it's just, over and over. Yeah, it's just a, 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 a recycle and nothing changes except for adding salt. Mm. 
Well, that's awesome. Absolutely. Well, as you can see, the resin is something that is so very important. Um, it hasn't changed for many, many years. Water is such a corrosive um, thing that can happen to the boiler to where the, the tubes can get pitted or um, Scale you know, scaling and yeah. things like that. And so it's so important to have uh, a water softener, um, but also um, really the heart is the resin. We appreciate Steve hanging out with us today. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, we appreciate Steve stopping by with us today on The Boiling Point and talk a little bit about the water softener, but more importantly, that resin. The resin is so very important in the water softener. Make sure you tune in next time as we talk about the water softener and actually how it works. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to that YouTube channel. And if you like these videos, please share them. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.